This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a comedy, horror, and mystery film called Happy Death Day. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Teresa Tree Gelbman wakes up in the dorm room of her schoolmate, Carter. Her phone rings with a birthday song, but she doesn't pick up her dad's call. Tree gets dressed while Carter awkwardly averts his eyes and fetches Tylenol for her headache. She takes the medicine and warns Carter not to tell anyone that she spent the night in his room. Outside, Tree notices a few things, including an automated sprinkler dousing a couple, a truck blaring its alarm, and a group of frat recruits that are forced to sing. She's then blocked by Tim, who questions why she hasn't contacted him since their date, but she brushes him off. Finally, Tree sneaks back into the sorority house but still catches the attention of the leader, Danielle, who snarkily teases her. Tree heads to her bedroom and is greeted by her roommate, Lori. Lori recounts how Tree made up with Nick Sims in front of Danielle during the party last night, and Tree is thankful that Danielle doesn't remember that. Before Tree leaves for class, Lori gives her a cupcake with a birthday candle. Tree wanted to keep her birthday a secret, but she still accepts the cupcake blows out the candle, then tosses it in the trash since it has too many carbs. Tree arrives at her class, taught by Professor Gregory Butler. Later, Danielle leads the sorority meeting when one of their members, Becky, arrives, carrying a heavy meal. Her excuse was that she skipped breakfast, but still gets ostracized. When Becky moves away, Carter bumps into her, causing the food to spill over Tree. Carter apologizes and gives Tree the bracelet that she left in his room, but Tree simply glares at him until he leaves. At the university hospital, Tree bumps into Lori who works there as a nurse. Lori figures out why Tree is there and advises her against it, but Tree stresses that it's none of her business. Tree goes up to Gregory's office and entices him. Gregory, who's also a doctor there, insists that he's too busy, but Tree still throws herself at him. However, they're interrupted when his wife, Stephanie, knocks on his door. That night, Daniel reminds her about the party when the lights flicker. While walking to the party, Tree listens to her dad's voicemail, who's angry that she ditched their lunch date. She passes by a group of sports fans, not noticing that one of them stops and stares at her. Tree heads to the underpass and finds a music box in the middle. Thinking it's a joke, she approaches it and looks closer. When the music stops, she finds the hooded figure wearing a baby face mask watching her. Tree taunts the figure, but when they don't respond, she threatens to call the cops. The hooded figure leaves, so Tree passes through the tunnel, still watching her back. The music box plays again when she reaches the end, and Babyface sneaks behind her with a knife. She runs and trips, allowing Babyface to stab her. Tree suddenly wakes back up in Carter's room, where Carter greets her the same as before. Confused, Tree changes clothes and even points Carter to where a supply of Tylenol is. Carter laughs, commenting that it's like she's been there before. Tree walks out of the dorm and notices the same things that she saw before. She shrugs it off until Tim approaches her again. He tells her that it's the 18th, confusing her further. Tree heads to the sorority house where Danielle greets her the same way. She prepares for class and Lori presents the cupcake again. Tree hurries out without even blowing out the candle. During the sorority meeting, Tree spots the baby face mask being sold nearby, filling her with dread. When Danielle starts scolding Becky, she gets up and Tree tries to warn her, but she's too late. The food gets spilled onto Tree again and Carter apologizes. In Gregory's office, she tries to tell him what's happening, but he mistakes it as her confessing to him. After hearing that she's not in love with him, Gregory starts kissing her, so she warns him about his wife. Tree leaves as soon as Stephanie walks in. In her room, Tree watches a video of her and her mother blowing the candles out on a previous birthday. Daniel reminds her about the party again when the lights go out. Tree gets scared as everything is happening again, but she still walks to the party alone and notices the sports crowd passing by. Again, Babyface watches her eerily, but his friends soon call the masked kid back. When she reaches the underpass, the music box is there again. Scared, Tree picks another route to the party. However, when she gets there, it's like no one's home. She checks around when suddenly, Babyface appears at the doorway. Tree punches him in the face, only to find out that it's Nick. She realizes that the party is a surprise birthday celebration for her. Danielle talks to Tree during the party, hinting that Lori is seeing a mystery guy. Nick walks up to them and hints that Tree can make up for punching him, which makes Danielle jealous. Tree heads upstairs and sees that Nick is sneaking into one of the rooms. She follows him, but doesn't see him inside. While checking herself in the mirror, she finds Babyface standing behind her. She removes his mask and fortunately, 
it's Nick again. He switches on disco lights and music, inviting her to dance with him. Tree is unimpressed, so she checks her phone and lies to Danielle that she's not with Nick. The loud music prevents Tree from hearing Nick scream as Babyface stabs him. When Tree starts to leave, Babyface reveals a knife. She tries to escape but gets pinned on the bed. A drunk schoolmate walks in, but assumes that they're just fooling around and leaves. This allows Babyface to stab Tree. Tree wakes up in Carter's room again and cries, realizing that she's repeating the same day. She walks out and sees everything repeating. She rushes to her bedroom and Lori notices that she's freaking out. Tree admits that she's lived through the same day twice, but Lori isn't convinced. To prove it, Tree states that Lori made her a cupcake and that there's a surprise party for her tonight. Lori assumes that someone just told her, but Tree stresses that no one did. Tree then reveals that someone will kill her, but Lori advises her to rest for the day. Tree takes the advice and stays in her room with the windows and doors barricaded. While watching TV, she takes Lori's cupcake but realizes that the remote is missing. While searching for it, she finds a birthday card that warns her that there's no tomorrow. Suddenly, the TV turns off. Tree slowly approaches it, and it switches on and changes channels. When the TV turns off again, Tree hears the closet door creak. She grabs a hammer before opening the closet but no one's there. Something moves in the bathroom, so Tree walks towards it. As she's about to open the shower curtain, the TV switches on again, distracting her. Babyface comes out of the bathroom and attacks. Tree evades the attack and slams Babyface with the hammer. She struggles to open the barricaded door, so she gets stabbed again. She wakes up screaming in Carter's room. Carter watches her scream and run out of the dormitory. Tree gets disoriented as everything repeats. She starts hyperventilating until Carter bumps into her. At the university cafe, Carter is stunned after hearing Tree's story. She reveals that it's her birthday, so Carter figures that whoever is trying to kill her knows that it's her birthday today. Tree realizes that her sorority already told the entire school about the surprise party, so it could be anyone. When Carter asks who could have a motive, Tree first thinks it's Danielle, since she made out with Nick, who Danielle likes. Tree adds Gregory, Stephanie, Tim, and a girl she got fired. When Carter realizes that she's listing many people, Tree defends that no one's perfect. Carter encourages her that since she's in a time loop, she has plenty of opportunities to discover who her killer could be. Since there's no better idea, Tree accepts it. Tree formulates a plan to figure out who her killer is. She peeks at Tim's bedroom window and discovers him watching a gay movie. When she turns, however, Babyface stabs her. On the next loop, she stalks Stephanie but sees that she's heading to another event that night. Babyface tackles Tree from behind and drowns her in the fountain. Next, Tree investigates Danielle and sees the birthday card among her things. Assuming that it's Danielle, Tree tackles her in the middle of the road where they both get hit by a bus. Driven mad, Tree dares to walk around the campus, naked. That night, she waits for her attacker with a baseball bat but ends up knocking Becky out instead. Babyface sneaks up behind her and bashes her head. Tree wakes up in Carter's room again and criticizes his plan, much to his confusion. She gets ready to leave but gets dizzy and collapses. Tree finds herself in the hospital and sees Babyface walking up to her. She gets scared but finds out that it's just Carter. Suddenly, the lights go out and Gregory appears, telling Carter that visiting hours are over. After Carter leaves, Gregory shows her that her x-ray shows severe trauma. Given the signs of injury, Gregory explains that Tree should be dead. Tree realizes that she's still in danger and tries to leave, but Gregory assures her that she's safe. Tree asks him to get her a soda but hurries to leave when he's away. Tree sneaks around the hospital and goes to his office looking for his car keys. When she opens his drawer, she finds a babyface mask hidden in his desk, believing that Gregory is babyface. She tearfully walks across the hallway. Gregory appears and tries to calm her down, but Babyface arrives and stabs him. Tree runs to the fire escape and heads to the parking lot with Gregory's car keys, but before she makes it to the car, Babyface appears, forcing her to hide. Tree quietly sneaks her way to the car, nearly getting spotted. She remotely unlocks the car and rushes inside. Babyface smashes the car window, so Tree puts the car in reverse before driving away. When she gets far enough, Tree celebrates that she survived. However, she gets pulled over by a traffic officer. The officer asks her for her license, so she explains that she was getting chased and didn't have time to get her clothes back. The officer accuses her of being drunk, and Tree agrees. She willingly gets arrested, believing that a jail cell is the safest place that she could be in. After the officer handcuffs and puts her in the back of his car, he gets run over. Babyface steps out of the vehicle, and Tree has no way to escape. 
She yells at her assailant and challenges them to show their face. Instead, Babyface goes back to their car and shows her a lit birthday candle. Tree realizes that Babyface tapped into the car's fuel. When the candle is dropped, the fire reaches the car and explodes. Back in Carter's room, she's tired and hopeless and downs all of Carter's Tylenol before leaving. Carter follows her, hoping to hear an explanation on why she's pissed. Tree jokes about her time loop and to prove it, she points out everything before it happens. They head to a diner where Tree ignores her father's calls again. Tree is uninterested in pretending to be happy while she's grieving her mother's death, with whom she shares the same birthday. The time loop has led Tree to realize how she's not the kind of person her mother would have been proud of. Carter encourages her that she can still be a better person, but Tree doesn't have much time left since her body is getting weaker the more she loops back in time. The news about John Toombs catches Tree's attention. Toombs, a serial killer who targets young blonde women, is currently admitted to the university hospital. Realizing that he'd been there this whole time, she runs to the hospital and warns the nurse that Toombs will escape. She sees that the officer watching Toombs is gone. Tree takes a fire axe before checking inside. The door window is splattered with blood, and Toombs isn't on the bed. Tree walks in, not noticing Babyface hiding behind the door. She finds the officer dead, just as Babyface shoots the axe from her hand. Tree runs out, and Babyface ends up shooting the nurse. Tree goes to the elevator, but Toombs finds her revealing that he's Babyface. Suddenly, Carter tackles Toombs, and Tree takes his gun. However, it jams, so Toombs snaps Carter's neck. Tree runs out and squeezes herself into the bell tower. Toombs follows and kicks the locked door open. Tree sneaks behind him and hits him with the crowbar, and finally she gets the upper hand. But she realizes that Carter will remain dead if the day doesn't loop again. Tree then makes her way up to the tower and hangs herself. When she wakes up, Tree happily hugs Carter and thanks him for saving her life. She makes her way across the campus in a peppy mood and even encourages Tim to come out of the closet. At the sorority house, Tree tells Danielle that she'll marry Carter if she makes it through the day. Upon reaching her bedroom, Tree apologizes to Lori for being an awful roommate. Lori smiles and jokes that she's high. Tree teases her about her mystery guy before leaving for class. Afterward, Tree ends her relationship with Gregory. When Gregory ridicules her, Tree berates him for not being brave enough to leave his wife. At the sorority meeting, Danielle is about to ridicule Becky when Tree steps in, carrying a tray with more unhealthy food. Tree invites the girls to live a little, but Danielle just further humiliates them. Tree then takes Becky's chocolate milk and dumps it on Danielle in retaliation. When Carter walks up to return her bracelet, she kisses him in front of her sorority sisters and invites him on a date. Later, Tree finally shows up at a lunch date with her father. She confesses that she misses her mom and that she's been avoiding him to forget her grief. But now, Tree realizes that avoiding her grief only worsens things. After making amends with her father, Tree prepares herself for battle. At the hospital, Tree steals the officer's gun and explains that Toombs is about to escape, so she orders the officer to call for backup. Then, Tree walks into the room and finds that Toombs is still in bed. She pulls the trigger, but forgets to take the safety off. Toombs pushes her out and grabs the knife. Tree kicks him to escape, but Toombs throws her down. Suddenly, Tree's watch beeps and she smiles. The lights go out, letting Tree take the gun back and finally shoot Toombs. Finally ending the nightmare, Tree and Carter celebrate her birthday in her bedroom. Carter wonders how Toombs got out in the first place, but Tree hasn't figured that out yet. She takes the cupcake that Lori made for her and blows out the candle, wishing for tomorrow. Tree wakes up and immediately realizes that she's still in the loop. She panics and rushes back to her room. She packs her bag, hoping to get away to escape the loop. Lori tries to calm her down with the cupcake, but Tree claims that she already ate it last night. That's when she realizes that she died in her sleep after eating the cupcake. She deduces that Lori poisoned the cupcake, but she didn't eat it until the last loop. When Toombs was wheeled into the hospital, he became the perfect cover. Lori drugged Toombs and placed the knife and baby face mask on him to frame him for Tree's murder. When Lori scoffs at her theory, Tree dares her to eat the cupcake, otherwise she'd surrender it to the police. Out of options, Lori slams Tree into the wall and locks the door. Lori reveals that her mystery lover is also Gregory, but he's been paying more attention to Tree. This starts the fight between the two girls. Danielle knocks on the door, distracting Lori long enough to let Tree stuff the cupcake into her mouth. 
Lori backs away trying to spit out the cupcake. Tree kicks her out of the window where Lori finally dies. The news reports about Lori's death and Danielle hogs the spotlight during the interview. Tree's dad calls her and she assures him that she's okay. Since Tree's bedroom is a crime scene, Carter invites her to stay at his dorm again. The next day, Tree wakes up in Carter's room with her ringtone playing again. She freaks out until Carter reveals that he was just joking. She finally made it to the 19th. Tree hits him with the pillow for tricking her, and they end up in bed to make out. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.